So we've made up two people here. Well, not made them up. They're Mike and Miley. Uh, anybody that knows me, Mike and Miley are my two kids. So Mikey, he's going to be a chiropractor. Or, uh, sorry, Mikey's, gonna, Mikey's not going to be a chiropractor. Mikey's going to be a contractor. Uh, let's say Mikey's incorporated and he wants to buy a house. Um, Miley, let's call her a psychologist. That's what she wants to do eventually. Um, let's say she's sole, uh, sole proprietor and wants a house with an A lender with the lowest rate. So let's break in and let's look at what this would be hypothetically for them. Um, for those that don't know, Mike and Miley are still in high school. Neither one of them are, are working right now. And, and uh, this definitely isn't a real scenario. Um, it is, you know, these are scenarios that we did take. We took these to an accountant to say, you know, what are some tax options? How can these taxes be looked at? Um, so let's look at what this would look at from an income tax perspective. So let's say they both have a gross business income of $200,000. Miley, because she's a sole proprietor, she's paying personal income tax. So she's at 30%. Um, her personal income tax is $44,000. She's paying a higher um, CPP of $5,800. Her net business income is $150,000. She's not paying corporate taxes because she's not self-employed or she's not, she's not incorporated. But the total amount that she's paying to the government every year is $50,000. Now, Mike, on the other hand, he is uh, incorporated. So he's not paying himself too much. His personal income tax rate is very low. Um, he's not paying any CPP. His net business income is high. Um, and he's paying a corporate income tax rate at around 15%. The corporate taxes that are going to be paid are about $22,500. Um, and the total money that he's paying to the government is going to be $22,000. You know, you can see here that Mike's definitely going to be saving money. Again, these are hypothetical solutions. You know, we work with an accountant to see exactly what your best options are. Um, like I said, the disclaimer here, I'm not an accountant. I don't claim to be. I don't want to be. These are estimates from some of our friends and some of the uh, the partners that we work with um, in terms of what the, the, uh, the numbers can look like. Now, one of the things to remember here is when you look at the two different taxes, the amounts paid to the government for Miley, that's just going to be times two because in a lot of years, we need two years in a row to qualify um, if you want the lower rate. So that tax bill that she's paying there is actually going to be double. Now let's look at down payment. So what does Miley need for a down payment? Well, so she's going to be treated like anybody that's uh, you know, any typical borrower. So she needs 5% of the first $500,000, 10% for any funds between five hundred and a uh, million dollars and 20% for anything over a million dollars. Mike, on the other hand, he's just going to need 20% down. So any marketable residential home, we're going to need 20% down for. So how much do they qualify? Mike, actually, because we have some different stated incomes, qualifies for a little bit more house. Again, that comes with a higher mortgage payment, but he does qualify for a little bit more house because of the way that that income is structured. Now, when can they buy? This is a really key one because you never know what's going to happen in the housing market. Mike, because we have stated income programs and we have alternate lending programs, Mike can buy within the next six to 12 months. Miley, however, she might have to wait two to three years before she can buy because, like I said, we have to have those two years financials. And unfortunately, the day you get your second year prepared usually isn't the day that you're looking for a mortgage. So that's going to take a little bit more time until that's done. But let's say they both buy a $700,000 house. They're both getting a $700,000 mortgage. So Miley has no lender fee. She's getting a little bit lower rate. Um, her amortization is locked in at 25 years. Um, and her monthly payment is going to be $43.58. Mike, on the other hand, his interest rate is going to be a little bit higher. He is going to have a higher lender fee. So he's going to have a broker fee or a lender fee of 1%, maybe 2%. Now he can stretch his amortization out. We do have 30-year options. There's even some 35 and 40-year options depending on the property um, and what the application actually looks like. That's going to leave his monthly payment a little bit lower. We have options for lower payments, but you can, we also have lenders that have options depending on what your type of business is. You know, Maybe you get paid in lump sums all the time and you want to make lump sum payments you know, more often. We have lenders that will allow that. So we want to make sure that we're finding you the right product. Um, interest rate isn't always the most important thing, but making sure we can make those payments that's most important to you. Now, one of the things to consider is how much are housing prices going to increase in that two years that Miley has to wait? You know, she doesn't get to buy today. Mike gets into the market right now. He's building equity. The other thing to consider is what if there's changes in the next two years that Miley has to wait? So government regulations, things like the stress test, that could change. Uh, interest rates could go up. Lender preferences. So Miley wants to go with a bank. The banks could decide that they're just not going to lend to self-employed people the same way they were before. So there's a lot of different options out there. And what I can say is, you know, self-employed people, you can either be Mike or Miley. If you want to work with the A lenders, there are lenders that will work with you. We do have options for you if you want that A lender. If you want the B lender, we have options for you either way. Like I said, by working with a mortgage agent, you have access to the right guidance. We can make sure that you're structured properly. And we want to make sure that time is on your side. So if you you know, plan ahead, work with a great team, 
we can get help get this done for you and help make it work. Let's connect. Uh, the next page is going to have an option for a strategy call on the next lesson. Um, there's an option there to get started. We can get your mortgage application started right away. If you have questions, give me a call. Let's chat. I look forward to helping you through this. And thanks again for signing up for my course.